The Commanding Heights. Welcome to another edition of The Christian Economist. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott. The Commanding Heights is an amazing book written in 1998 by Joseph Stanislav and Daniel Jurgen. Jurgen is mostly known for his, the book called The Prize, in which he won the Pulitzer Prize. It's about the world's supply of oil. But in The Commanding Heights, written in 1998, Jurgen and Stanislav take us through an amazing journey of the 20th century of economics and politics. They start in 1914 with the killing of Archduke Ferdinand, which began World War I. And they make the statement that in 1914, the world was pretty open and pretty free. Free market capitalism mostly controlled the world. Through three segments of what, what, what then became a video called The Commanding Heights, which you can search for on YouTube and watch it. We watch it in my classes every semester. It's a three-part segment, three-segment video done by uh, WGBS in Boston, the PBS station. But you can search on YouTube and find it. The first one is called... Uh, the battle of ideas. And this makes it so clear that we begin the century in 1914 way on what to me is the right side of the board, where the economy is controlled by ideas of people like Frederick Hayek. It's controlled by markets, free market capitalism. Later in the century, we see Milton Friedman evolve on the right side of the screen. Simply on the left, across the spectrum, we see John Maynard Keynes, we see government, we see socialism, Galbraith. I know this is a simplification of economics, but it's worth noting that the title of this first segment is The Battle of Ideas. And in this way of seeing it, there are only two ideas. I know it's a simplification, but that's what we do when we teach. So on the left side of the board, you've got government controlling the economy. On the right side of the board, you've got markets controlling the economy. The Commanding Heights takes us in this amazing journey, starting in 1914 on the right side of the board. By mid-century, we're on the left side of the board, and socialism is controlling most of the world's economy. By the time they turn off the video, the video was made in 2000. The book was written in 1998. By the time they turn off the video in 2000, they say, look, we've gone way to the right side of the board. That's where we're going to stay, and they turn the video off. But if you've watched history since 2000, you've seen that is not what happens. As a matter of fact, we should think about the 1992 book by Francis Fukuyama called The End of History, which he said the same thing Commanding Heights said. Look, we're all, all the world is generally controlled by some type of republic democracy politically and economically by free market capitalism, and that's where we're going to stay. Well, the Commanding Heights was wrong. Francis Fukuyama was wrong. Because as I'm recording this in late 2019, there are socialists running for president of the United States. But again, the Commanding Heights gives us an amazing view of economics just from the left side of the board, governments in control, right side of the board, markets in control, where should we be? Let's look at our Christian worldview on this. See, in the Christian worldview, if you look at my little book called Economics, A Christian Worldview, you see there's only three elements, creation, fall, redemption. So we believe the world was created perfect. We believe that fallen humans have messed it up. We believe it can be redeemed. So the, uh, perhaps the phrase I say most in the classroom is, the most economic myths stem from a denial of the fallen nature. In economics, we call it self-interest. In religious terms, we call it the fallen nature. If people have self-interest, if they have fallen nature, then you can approach them in that way. In the middle of this program, The Commanding Heights, which I highly recommend you watch. Yeah, it'll take five or six hours of your time, but it's really great political history. There's this great economist from the University of Chicago. If you've seen uh, episodes of Gilligan's Island and you can picture the skipper, this guy looks and talks just like the skipper. So he's an older guy. He's reputable. He's speaking into the camera, and he looks at the camera and says, look, the economy is a force of nature. If you align yourself with these forces, you will do well. And that's the end of his quote. Well, that's what we believe is in a Christian worldview, that there are natural forces. God created the world. People are naturally fallen, but they can be redeemed. If we start from this assumption of the fallen nature, it makes most of us Christian economists stay on the right side of this board 
because we know government people are fallen. Yes, mark, people in markets are fallen also, but competition is a way of controlling that fallen nature, whereas in the government there's no means of controlling it. So most of us end up on that right side. So uh, in the middle of the film, it's really great, or in the middle of the book, The Commanding Heights, again, by Jurgen and Stanislav. It, it's fascinating because right after World War II, Winston Churchill, one of the great heroes of the, of the, of the century, is voted out of office, and the Brits go for Clement Attlee, the labor candidate. And they say on the, in the video, they say clearly, look, we think Churchill was good at winning the war, but he wasn't going to be good at winning the peace. We wanted to go a socialist way. And you see these quotes from people saying you know, it was going to make the country great. This is 1946. By 1975, the country had devolved so far that a futurist predicted by the year 2000, the two poorest countries on the continent would be Albania and the United Kingdom. He made that prediction in 1975. His prediction did not come true. Well, it was half true. Albania is one of the poorest countries in Europe. The UK is one of the richest countries. Why? Because of the election in 1979 of Margaret Thatcher, who took the commanding heights. Oh, and we didn't define that well, did we? They're calling the book The Commanding Heights because Lenin, when he takes office, takes office, assumed office, took over <laughs> uh, the Bolshevik Revolution starting in 1917, ending in 1923, he said the government must control the commanding heights of the economy. And so Vladimir Lenin took Russia to the left side of the board, where government controlled the commanding heights. What are the commanding heights? The big parts of the economy, oil, steel, communication, transportation, electricity, now we go back to Margaret Thatcher in 1979 and find that she freed the government of the commanding heights and put them in private hands. So again, we've got this really simple left and right side of the board consideration. And we as Christian economists look at that and say, where does God intend us to be? Does he intend the government to control the commanding heights? Or does he intend private markets to control the commanding heights? And I make it very clear to my students. There's no country that's totally on the left side of the board. Nobody's totally on the right side of the board. We're all in the middle somewhere, and we all move left or right on each election. But if you can understand this very simple battle of ideas, at least you know where we're going, and you have these two really simple choices. And in the, in the video and in the book, they make this great point that in the mid-70s, it should have been the end of Keynesianism, mean meaning Maynard Keynes' idea that the government can control the economy because stagflation happened in the 70s. See, Keynes said you can't have inflation and unemployment at the same time. They will balance each other. You can have one or the other, but you can't have both. Well, in the mid-1970s in the United States in the Carter administration, we had both stagflation, which was inflation and unemployment at the same time. That should have marked the end of Keynesianism. So we take you this amazing commanding heights. Who should control the commanding heights? And at the end, again, they turn off the camera or they close the book, uh, close the book in 1998, turn off the camera in 2000 and say, look, we're all on the right side of the board. We're all free market capitalists. That's where we're going to stay. And they say that governments had retreated from the commanding heights. Why had they? Well, our Christian answer is because they determined that governments were fallen. And since governments don't have a control mechanism like the markets do, markets have a control me mechanism, prices and competition. Government does not have that. And that's why governments are retreated from the commanding heights and why in this fantastic book, The Commanding Heights by Jurgen and Stanislaw, 1998, the video is easier to watch from 2000, we find that we start from the right side of the board in 1914, we go to the left side of the board in mid-century. We end the century on the right side of the board, but the argument still conti continues. The battle of ideas. We as Christians mostly see us on the right side of that board. There you go. The Commanding Heights by Jurgen and Stanislav. I highly recommend it. This has been Dave Arnott for The Christian Economist, where our slogan is, Fear God, Tell the Truth, Earn a Profit. See you next time.